And sure enough, there's a guy named John Huggin from Scotland wrote this article in the European golf world, and, and he just ripped me. I mean, they singled me out. I mean, they, for some reason, they singled me out. And this John Huggin wrote this article and just was really negative. And, and so I read it, you know, two or three times. And I thought, this, I mean, this isn't even true. I mean, none of this is even true. And I was so angry. And I, you know, hey, I'm going to go to the Dunhill Cup in a couple of weeks. I know he's going to be there. When I see John Huggin, I am going to let him have it. I am going to rip this guy a new one. And so sure enough, I go to St. Andrews. I see John hugging on the range over in the corner over there, and I go marching straight over, and I get right in his face, and boy, oh boy, I let him have it. And I let it, I mean, I, I'm not typically the kind of person who is a confrontational guy, you know, but I was so angry by what I perceived to be an injustice that I, that I just got right in his face, and I blasted him with everything I had, and it was ugly. I mean, I swore at him, I cursed him, I... I told him exactly what I thought of him, and it was just brutal, okay? But I thought I was justified because he, he lied about me, and so I marched back, and I played the tournament, never thought twice about it, never thought about it again. Well, seven years go by, 2006, and uh, I become the Ryder Cup captain, which is a big honor. Yes. Well, John Huggin hasn't forgotten about me, <laughs> okay? So John Huggin writes a second article about me, and this one makes the other one look like the Boy Scouts, mostly, mostly because he basically almost quotes verbatim in this article what I said to him that day on the range. I mean, he got it all perfectly right. So obviously it, it made quite an impact on him because he remembered exactly what I said. And so this article talks about this and that, and then it, it quotes me most of the way through about what I said to him, and he sums it all up and says, you know, Tom Lehman is the world's biggest hypocrite. He's the biggest hypocrite I know. The guy is such a blankety-blank himself. He didn't swear, but, you know, he, he, he just ripped me a new one. This time, deservedly so, mm. right? And so I sat there, and I read this, and I, and I read through what I said, and I go, yeah, uh-huh, I said that, yeah, yeah, I said that, yep, mm-hmm, yep, I said that for sure. Absolutely, that, that's me. And I start thinking about that, and I go, you know, I feel really bad about that. <laughs> you know, um, I am a hypocrite. You know, I do call myself a Christian, and look what I said to this guy. You know, I don't care what he wrote about me. Nobody deserves that. I mean, what was I thinking? I got to make this right. I got to make this right. And the only thing that he had in the article was an email address. You know, John Huggin, you know, John at europeangolf.com or whatever. So I wrote him an email. And so I sent him an email and said, hey, I read this most recent article you wrote. And uh, yeah, you got it just right. You got it just right. And um, hypocrite, absolutely, that's me. Guilty as charged. Um, I feel so bad. You know, but, but speaking of the spiritual part of it all, you kind of nailed it, is that I'm, I'm a bad guy. So, and so reading, and reading what I said to you, that's the reason why I am a Christian. So I know what I'm capable of. I know what I can do. I know the things that I can say that are terrible, the actions that I can commit that hurt people. I understand that, and I know that, and I know that I have need for forgiveness from a God who, who loves me. And so that's the reason why I am a Christian, just because I am so imperfect. But all I can ask from you is for you forgiveness, because I feel terrible for what I said. Would you please forgive me? Okay, so I know a lot of Christian people who would never forgive me. John Huggin emails back within minutes. I absolutely forgive you. Absolutely forgive you. Thank you for your letter. I accept that apology. All right, and when you come to Scotland next year, let's get together and we'll have a beer together. And so we did. And so we, we, to, today we're, we're buddies. We're buddies, you know, but, but I think to me that's, that's almost like the essence of Christianity. Um, who, who, here, who here is perfect? I know I'm not. Uh, I know that I have a need for a Savior. And, uh, and I think that really spoke to John, you know, that uh, he understood. I think he really, through all that, maybe for the first time, understood the need for Christ.